Hey guys, welcome to Box Bread. Um, just going to give my brief thoughts really on uh, the fights that happened on the weekend. I believe it was September the 15th. And uh, yeah, so let's get started. Um, the first fight was a World Cruiserweight fight, which was in Germany. Uh, and that was Johan Pablo Hernandez going up against Troy Ross. And uh, yeah, it was a really good start uh, to the evening, uh, that main event. Um, I thought it was a really good fight. Um, Troy Ross actually uh, hurt Hernandez quite badly, had him uh, on the rocks. Um, and he was really catching Hernandez with wild swings, really. Um, you know, quite dangerous. And he did show some flaws of Hernandez in that fight. And it was quite um, interesting to see how easily he actually could get to Hernandez. Um, because there's obviously talk of um, Johan Hernandez fighting Marco Hook in the near future. And, um, you know, Hernandez won the unanimous decision in that one. Now, um, I thought a draw, or perhaps a point either way, would have been a fair result. Because Hernandez did hurt Troy Ross a bit later on in the fight. Um, so And overall, it was it was a close fight. I predicted Ross by majority decision, um, and it could have happened, but it so happened that uh, Hernandez got the decision. I agree with the, I think it was, <clears throat> I know the first score, I'm not sure what it was, I think it might have been a point in favour of Hernandez, but then the other two scorecards of I think it was one fifteen, one twelve, one sixteen, one twelve in favour of Hernandez. I really disagreed with them two scores, and I thought it was that wasn't uh, really you know the best judging in the world. But it is what it is. Uh, Ross put up a good show. I'll be honest with you. Um, you know, you I wouldn't go against seeing a rematch because I think it was that it was a close fight and it was a it was a you know a good fight. Both guys. Um, were hurt at points in the fight, and it, it was quite an exciting fight. And just a side note on the undercard of that fight, um, Edmund Gerber went up against Michael Sprott, and um, Michael Sprott was actually doing pretty well in that fight, and um, I think he, he established a jab and he was doing pretty good. Um, but then in the fourth round, he got caught, I think it was a right hand, and went down quite viciously, really. He sort of the, when they go, the fighter goes down and hits the back of his head on the canvas, and you could see Sprott's eyes were all over the shop. And um, the referee stopped the fight, he got up and took an eight count, whatever it was, and uh, the referee stopped it. Somewhat, you could argue, prematurely, but because Sprott seemed to be kind of still with it. Um, and he actually uh, went over and kind of uh, pushed the ref two or three times, and the ref fell over on the third, went over on the third push. And... Um, it caused a little bit of controversy there. Uh, Michael Sprott attacking the ref. So it was quite quite amusing, quite entertaining. But uh, hope I don't know what's coming of that. Hope they you know he did hug the referee afterwards, gave his apologies. I, I guess. Uh, hopefully, nothing nothing came of it. Um, just the heat of the moment type thing. He was ang angered at being stopped. But um, I don't know if anything's any of any news on, on that front but just thought I'd give it a mention because it was something that happened that was quite amusing um, you know don't really condone fighters sort of pushing you know attacking the referee after the decision or early stoppage but it wasn't that serious um, you know but uh, it was just something fun that happened moving on um, Leo Santa Cruz defeated Eric Morrell by TKO in the fifth round I haven't seen the fight, um, but I thought I'd mention it because I've heard really good things about Leo Santa Cruz. Quite a few guys on Twitter, I did see mentioning that they, you know, rate him, um, and I think he a few few guys do see him as a a real talent for the future now. And uh, he did the business again again against Eric Morrell by the sound of it. I've seen him fight like once or twice before. Um, haven't seen an over, you know, a really big amount of uh, Leo Santa Cruz, but from what I did see, he looked pretty decent. Um, reminded me of Eric Morales, uh, type of fighter, maybe with a bit, bit more skill to his game, but that type of, uh, you know, um, ruggedness and to his to his boxing, um, can take. He's the type of guy who, who looks like he can take a shot, um, on the on the gloves. Um, he looks like he can take take shots because he got a pretty good defensive guard, and then he can, 
and loads his own stuff. But um, I, I'd like to take a little more, bit, bit more of a look at Santa Cruz. Um, see what he, you know, for the future. See, see, uh, you know, get more of a take on him. My own opinion on him. But uh, before I mention that, Saul Alvarez beat uh, Jose Cito Lopez, TKO in the fifth round. Won probably the se- the second biggest fight of the night. Um, but to be, I'll be honest, I haven't seen that fight either because um, I was watching the Martinez Chavez fight. But uh, from what from by all accounts, from what, what other guys are saying, um, it's what most of us expected that Sosa Cito Lopez wasn't right at that weight. He's too small to be fighting at that weight right now against uh, Sol Alvarez, and Alvarez's power um, came through. Um, that was another one that I gave a prediction on. I think I gave something like round eight off the top of my head. I can't remember. Stoppage for Alvarez. But it came earlier. Um, and it seems it sounds like it went as we much expected, but I'll be definitely trying to check these fights out that I haven't caught. Uh, I'll check them out soon. Um, Ponce de Leon went up against Johnny Gonzalez. Johnny Gonzalez putting his title on the line. Um, I actually was disappointed with this fight. I thought two pretty big punches. I thought it would have a bit more action than it did. Um, I thought that both guys were actually quite cautious because of their, opp- their opponent being a big puncher, I guess. Um, and Ponce de Leon, uh, I think he had a cut high on his head, on his hairline, early in the fight. And uh, But then, I think, I believe Gonzalez got cut. And this was stopped and Ponce de Leon got a technical decision in the 8th round. Um, I think Gonzalez got cut and it was a really bad gash. Uh, I think it was above the eye, and it was just they didn't let it continue, and Ponce de Leon was up on the scorecards. Um, I think it was quite a wide margin as well. I think he had had really sort of, from what I when when I was watching it, I I thought Gonzalez would deal with Ponce de Leon a bit better than he did. I think Ponce de Leon managed to get on top of him in that fight, and uh, yeah, it, this happens. Technical decision. Gonzalez lost his title. De Leon gets uh, gets the title. Um, but all in all, a bit of a disappointment. I thought we were going to see a bit more excitement, a bit more training of punches, um, a bit more of a war, if you like. Uh, but it didn't didn't turn out that way. And then uh, let's move on to uh, Marcos Maidana against uh, Jesus Soto Carras. Uh, what a fight! What a fight! Um, real all that war. Um, Carras took. You know, he was he, he reminded me of um, a loose gun last week against Lucas Matisse. This was very much a similar thing where he was just taking shots. And uh, Carras, you know, you can expect he's he's got a good chin. He's got a lot of heart. He will fight. He will have a war with you. He's been in there with other, other top guys. And uh, he was doing a pretty good job of trying to hold his own Carras, you know. he There were times when he was on to, really on top of Maidana and pushing Maidana back. And he was a bigger guy than Maidana, to be honest, in all fairness. But I was very impressed with Maidana. Um, the... the the, the work that Robert Garcia must have been doing with him is working out very well. Maidana was throwing a jab. Um, he was doing things in there, uh, technically, technical things, that you just don't expect from Maidana. And it shows that you can always look to improve your game. And I think that Malcolm Maidana, one one thing that really uh, you know will, will work good for going forward for him, I think, was the way he was throwing the right hand. Now, in the past, I've said that Marcus Maidana, his... One of his weaknesses, maybe, is that the wide punches he throws. You know, the the rawness of his punches, the lack of technique. He he you know he he would throw that right hand, although it's a very dangerous right hand. He would throw it very much with sort of a big loop, and it was very technically, you know, it was unfinished. It's like a, um, it was sort of a an unrounded skill of his. It was just a bit of a raw skill, and you could sort of he telegraphed it, and you could see it coming. Um, but the, the right hand he actually put Soto Carras down with in this fight, if you look at it, it was a very straight right hand. He was throwing a good straight right hand, um, and you know, and and he was he was using the jab in front of it. He was setting it up as well, which was very good to see. And I think um, you know, if he carries on down this route, we can see some good things still to come from uh, Marcus Maidana. Um, so I was impressed with him in that fight. The way he was throwing his punches, a lot straighter. He was waiting and picking his opportunities as well. Um, he wasn't just rushing forward and perhaps uh, in that raw style that we used to see in him. Um, so I thought it was a well-polished performance against a guy who was not easy to break down, and he was no walkover, Karras. 
He was a difficult guy. He gave Maidana something to think about. All in all, uh, a very good fight. Uh, really enjoyed it. And Maidana got the stoppage in, in the eighth round by TKO. Um, Matthew Macklin uh, against Joe Jim Alcin. Uh, I will be honest, I thought Macklin would look really good in this fight. I thought he would come out and look good, but I thought he would dominate and get a unanimous decision. Um, I thought, you know, Macklin will prove a point. He's uh, still at the top top of the division. He's still got you know plenty to offer against the top guys, I feel. And I thought this would prove it. I didn't think he would get the stoppage in the first round, first round KO. Um, you know, um, he caught Halcine with a beautiful right hand shot. He was patient because Halcine looked a bit cocky in there, trying you know sort of turning his back at times almost. Um, and he just wasn't with it. He just wasn't wasn't uh, you know up to being in the ring with a, with a guy who's 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 you know fighting at the top level in that division at the moment. And uh, he got what was coming to him when uh, Macklin stopped him with that. You know, hurt him with that right hand, and then went on to stop him up against the ropes. So very good performance by Macklin, short but sweet, and uh, let's see him in another top fight. That's what I say. Roman Martinez against Miguel Beltran Jr. Um, now this was a close fight. I watched a bit of it, and I turned over to watch the Ponce de Leon Gonzalez fight because I was really looking forward to that one, and I thought, you know, that would be the one to watch. How wrong I was, I haven't seen the rest of this fight, uh, or most of this fight, but I've heard from a lot of people saying this was quite possibly the fight of the night. Um, apparently a very good fight. Martinez won the split decision. Um, I'm not sure how close it was. I have heard from a couple of people that uh, Beltran deserved it. Um, but a split decision victory, close fight, apparently a very good fight. I will try and check it out when I get a chance now. Um, but... Kind of sorry that I turned over to the Ponce de Leon fight, if I'm being honest, because I was quite disappointed in that fight. And uh, by all accounts, this was an exciting one. Guillermo Rigondeau against Robert Marquim. Uh This was a decent fight. Um, I predicted, did a prediction for this fight as well. Um, I actually thought Rigondeau would stop him around the 8th round, I think I said. Uh, it didn't happen that way. Uh, Rigondeau won the unanimous decision, unanimous decision but... Like I said in my preview prediction, what I thought this with this fight is that Malakrim would surprise us by how competitive he actually was. And it proved that way. You know, he was competitive um, during the fight. Okay, he wasn't close enough on the scorecards to take a decision, but he did catch Rigondo a, a couple of times with counters. Um, and he showed, you know, a good defensive sound base. And he showed that he's going to be competitive in the future against other top guys in the division, perhaps. Um, you know, um, Rigondo was able to pull through. But um, and he he did I think did he put Maraquin down late in the fight I think he might have done, but uh, all in all Maraquin showing a competitive be to be a competitive opponent and and definitely a guy who's no pushover, definitely a guy who can be um, perhaps quite competitive at the top level in this division. And last but not least, the big fight of the night was Chavez Junior going up against uh, Sergio Martinez. Um, you know, let's keep it positive. It was um, I thought although it was a dominant victory, you know, let's face it, a very dominant victory for Sergio Martinez. <clears throat> I thought it was still a good fight to watch. I still enjoyed watching that. I enjoyed watching Martinez at the, top, at the height of his game, showing uh, tremendous skills. Uh, and Chavez did give us, you know, some value for money. He hung around in there. And like we see, you know, what a, what a great 12th round that was um, to catch Martinez. Like everyone else, I was up out of my seat, um, willing Martinez to uh, hang on in there um, and not undo all the hard work he'd done throughout the fight. He just he lost a bit of concentration there. I think he thought the fight was won when it wasn't. And it's always dangerous going into the last round against a guy who knows he needs a knockout. And Chavez Jr. was able to, to give the crowd um, you know, just that last great round of that fight. Um, <clears throat> on, on thoughts on the rematch... I'm not sure, you know. Um, he was steadily outboxed, Chavez Jr. I think he's competitive because of the weight. I, I, You know my thoughts if you looked at previous videos on Chavez Jr. I think he's competitive in this division because of the weight he's in. Um, I don't think he's, you know, anything special as a boxer. Um, he's de he's, a he's a good boxer, but he's not, you know, I wouldn't say if he was fighting at that weight, I think he probably would have got knocked out against Martinez. You know, I predicted a stoppage later in the fight. I think I said round 10. Um, I was wrong. <clears throat> he hung in there. 
But it, you know, uh, we now hear Freddie Roach was threatening to stop the fight if he didn't show him something. I think if he'd been down at that uh, that same weight, the same weight as Martinez on the night, I think that uh, if he didn't have that size advantage, he probably would get stopped like the other guys did. And I think it puts into perspective, you know, the good performance that um, Darren Barker and Matthew Macklin put in against Martinez, because they did a hell of a lot more than Chavez did. Um, and he's, you know, now maybe Macklin against Chavez Jr. might be a good fight. Personally, I, I still don't agree with Chavez fighting in that division. Um, I, I feel that, you know, maybe his, his skills and, like I say, his abilities and how, he, how well he does in fights is kind of overridden by, this, by his size, by the fact that he's just coming in so much bigger, <coughs> sometimes up to cruiserweight size. Um, that just puts into perspective the actual feat, the actual performance of Martinez to dominate a guy who is possibly a weight or two divi- division-wise above him, um, to, to dominate him in that way. It shows the skills and power of Martinez. Um, so moving forward, I really, I'm not personally fussed on the rematch. I think that yes, he caught Martinez in the twelfth round because Martinez was uh, <clears throat> perhaps took his, you know, concentration fell a bit. I don't buy this thing about Chavez Junior not picking it up in the early earlier rounds. I don't buy this thing that he could have started early in the fight to try and hit Chavez to hit uh, Martinez. I think there's a reason he didn't. It's because he was getting hit himself. If you know, if he felt he could have gone in and and you know, took a shot at Martinez earlier on, like he would have done. Trust me. Um, I think that okay in the rematch, maybe he'd do a bit better. Maybe he had more, he'd have more of a chance of starting earlier. But then you got to be be aware that Martinez also would have things on his side in the rematch. He would be able to. Um, you know he has an understanding of what Chavez Jr. is capable of now, um, and he can take that twelfth, learn from that twelfth round as much as Chavez can, in my opinion. So that's my take on the fight. Um, I was I just was happy to have such a great weekend of boxing. Really, some really um, brilliant fights, even uh, probably a couple that I haven't listed here that happened, which were, were probably good as well. Um, but this video is going on a bit and I'm going to leave it there um, thanks for watching guys please let me know what you felt of the, about the weekend but that's my thoughts on, on uh, what happened on the 15th September thanks for watching